Hi, I'm Norman Jay, and you're watching the Guest List Network. Welcome, here you are, it's the Guest List Network, and I'm here with the man who brings the sunshine wherever he plays. The only man to ever be awarded by the establishment for his services to music, even though he did not need that award to know that he's the undisputed king of the good times, Mr. Norman J. So, how you been, man? You been travelling the world? Yeah, I've been really great. Um, just got back from uh, an amazing time in Australia. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, I've done what I consider already, even though we're still in January, I consider to be the gig of the year for me. It, absolutely amazing, playing saw, at the Sydney Festival. I saw some video there, singing uh, in the rain, the yeah, rain coming down, and uh, everyone dancing. Yeah, absolutely, it was great. I'm looking forward to my first UK gig, first London gig at, at the Westbury, the Westbury in Kilburn, yeah. Now you've got a lot of worldwide places that run your kind of annual calendar, right? Absolutely, yeah. Is Australia yeah. one of those now? Yeah, that? Australia's been a permanent fixture in my sort of touring schedule for about the last 15 years at least. I love going there and I always sort of end up going there and New Zealand, the other side of the world, because you know right now it's midsummer for them, middle of their festival season. Uh, and I'm normally out there at this time of the year. Um, just only this year, I. I was there at the beginning of the month, or the beginning of January, as opposed to the end of January, beginning of February. So, I mean, you've got some Asia, is that on your annual Yeah, there? Asia as well. Asia is the future. I play in China a lot. You know, I hope to get back to doing more things in India. Whereabouts in China? Uh, Beijing? Or yeah, Beijing, yeah. you know, um, Shanghai, Chengdu, a few places. It's opening up, you know, and as they're the world's fastest growing economies, you know, I still want to get out there. So just going back to you know your roots, I mean, yeah. I hate you've been playing since you're about eight years old, right? Yeah, that's it's right. It's been a long time. You've done your homework. That's I good. I like that. Hey, you came back with the, the vibe from America, right? Yeah. Well, again, I was lucky. Um, right place, right time, right age. You know, been going to America since, or well, New York, since the late seventies, and was old enough and astute enough to see what was going on there, taking it all in, and on the periphery part of the culture loved it all but the one thing I didn't want to do was try and replicate it per se yeah. back in the UK yeah. back in London didn't want to do that because not a lot of people realize this or they choose not to realize this that our club culture is even older than New York's got our own history and we put our own twist on things not just in London in other cultural centers in the UK as well which is what I love always been into British youth culture, fashions, arts, um, and just the way British youth culture has evolved. You know, I'm, I'm an old school mod, you know, I'm an old school everything. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and you know, if I was still younger, I would definitely be playing an active part, you know, maybe in the grime scene, oh, or maybe in the dubstep yeah, scene. Yeah, 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 if absolutely. I was 18 now, that's exactly what I'd be doing. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Right, so I mean, you also involved with some of the early, like younger samples and so on. So yeah, we're all sort of same peer group. We're all old bastards now, <laughs> but you know, um, all those guys are amazing guys. I've got the utmost respect for them. They left an amazing legacy, yeah, yeah, yeah. which today's aspiring artists, performers, and producers, DJs, filmmakers, you know, have picked up on. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and run with, which, which is great. I mean, you know, particularly a lot of the, the sort of uh, the young black artists aspiring today, you know, they're only able to do that because of the doors that we kick down. Absolutely. So, talking about some of those doors when you're mm. the first black guy to be interviewed by an enemy. Yeah. <laughs> first <laughs> No, I was the first black DJ. Um, to be interviewed by them. Someone who wasn't part of the rock scene, wasn't part of the rock establishment. Yeah, fair play to them. You know, they had their fingers on the pulse, you know, and that's when I began to realize that, you know, what myself and people like Trevor Nelson was doing and Jazzy B 
we, we were doing. You know, we were f finally being acknowledged. You know, we weren't just sort of sh shadows doing things. You know, the, the things that we were creating, the things that we were driving, were culturally important. So. Now you've yeah. done things that many DJs would love to do in terms of being able to play whatever you want musically. You know a lot of DJs would love to be able to do that. Yeah. Have, you, have you got any regrets um, for not really jumping into one of those? No, things? not at all. No, not no. at all. Like I said, my whole head is different. I'm a maverick DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I take music risks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, don't. Outside of carnival and outside of my own gigs, I conform to the status quo. If you want me to do two hours of house, playing with the biggest house DJs, I can do that. If you want me to play two hours of hip hop with the biggest hip hop DJs, I can do that. But when I'm doing good times or when I'm doing my own gigs, all of those conventions go out the window. I, I call on, you know, close to 50 years of music knowledge. It's about the selection, it's the mix. Yeah, yeah. It's the mix that matters, not the technical mix, but the selection of tunes and the way they're put together. That's where my head's at and always has been and always will be. DJs, any DJ, even you can be great if you've got the best records in the world to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And similarly, you'll be crap if the music you're playing is crap. Yeah. So it's about you know, what comes out of the speakers, not necessarily what the guy behind the turntables is doing. Okay. I'm not driven by toys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm driven by selection, and history and knowledge. Nice. That's my strength. Well, something that you've got has taken you to, to many places to meet also, you know, great mm. other people you've done a lot. Yeah. Hey, you were at Bama's one of his inauguration parties. Yeah, not officially, but I was playing in Washington. So you got to still cut the fire right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, but I've played for diplomats. I've played for government officials. Oh, you played for uh, uh, right? Not just pop stars. And that's a normal yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, read, yeah anybody yeah. can, can yeah. reel off those things. <laughs> but, you know... Um, you know, DJing has many facets and I'm really th grateful and thankful that I've been able to explore those many facets. Like I said, you know, I play clubs, I play festivals, play the odd celebrity party. You know, for years I used to do the closing party at the World Economic Forum in Davos. Yeah, you know, for 500 of the people who basically run the planet. You know, and it's gigs on those levels. They're not clubs, they're not parties. But it takes a special skill to be able to entertain those kind of people in suits. But it must so. be big, big expectations always when it comes to a party. Um, no, I don't place expectations on, on anything. You know, you're, you're only as good as the people who are there okay. and, and, the, and the music you play. Like I said, you know, if you've got a great crowd in who are up for anything, even your worst record will be well received. Your worst track will be well received. And other times. You're, you're looking forward to it, you're hyped up. Boy, this gig is going to be banging. And when you go there, no matter how many bullets you drop, it's just not working. Right. Parties only work when, you know, all the constituent parts, you know, are firing at the same time. And my whole vibe is, you know, work with your crowd, appreciate them, maintain eye contact with them at all times. And what's working, give them what works. If it's not working, that to me is a great DJ someone who has the ability to see his crowd's not feeling it to change it now what are your other interests man if you want to have them their music books yeah I don't live the whole music thing 24-7 yeah. and I think that's really helped me you know I ain't a muso you know I have interests family interests and other interests outside of music which are healthy I mean watch a lot of movies uh, yeah watch movies I'm into you know the kind of um, heritage scene because I guess you know I wanted to be a mod when I was very young I was too young to be an original mod but you know the whole kind of mod ethic has always remained with me I guess it's just harking back to an age when you know first generation blacks like me were born here growing up in council estates mixing with with everybody getting on with everybody and loving it I mean but we, the most thing I think, we were free thinkers, we were creative, you know, we're, you know, America's always been great for giving us music genres, you know, it gave us jazz, you know, it gave us soul, it gave us R&B, it gave us hip hop, but it would never have given us Acid House, it would never have given us Jungle, it would never, never given us Grime. I love the fact that in Britain we take music, we subvert it, we fuck with it and we add that anarchic British twist 
And that's what we sell around the world. I mean, broken dance music. I mean, I feel that dance. Mm. Like, like England's always been that had that thing with dance. Music, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Drum and bass. Yeah, yeah. Jungle. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, even mm. things like you must have noticed that even like UK hip hop, you know, yeah. has gone goes up and down. And right now, that's yeah. having a massive. Yeah, time it's, of moment. course it is. Chipmunks in yeah, America. Yeah, yeah. The, the, so but the forth. thing is to build on that because it can be so short lived. You know, I've seen so many British artists down the years. You know, make inroads into America. America's yeah. a huge place. You know, it's, yeah, it's yeah. all right being big in New York. Yeah, yeah. We really need to be big. If you're going to be big, you have to be big in Hollywood. You have to be yeah, big yeah. in the media center. But you know, we're making positive steps. I mean, you know, even in the days when I used to play America regularly, you know, it was really good to see, you know, um, there was quite a lot of drum and bass DJs flying around America, same time as me, you know, playing to little pockets of people. They were, all they were doing, they were building, you know, they were innovating, they were knocking down doors, you know, and it, it was great. Is there anything else that in this child life of yours, anything that you have on your, on your bucket list, you know, what have you got to do now? No. Well, I've never set goals or ambitions you know for me you know like I said you know, everything is temporary so you just ride it you know obviously you have to think about it to be able to provide for your family if you're fortunate enough to make a career out of it you know don't fuck it up use your head do the right thing you know be patient it doesn't happen overnight but sadly you know we live in an age and a culture where people think you just had water and you're famous. What, famous for what? Yeah. Do something. Do something. <laughs> yeah, the, learn something. Yeah. You know, do something constructive that not only raises you as a person, that is a shining example to others. You know, I hope by doing this interview, I hope it inspires one kid that goes, you know what? I'm going to get an MBE like Norman Jay. So, I didn't hear that illegally or illegally we're going to do a party for the Olympics. We're going to get involved somehow. Uh, somehow. It's going to be one or two Diamond Jubilee um, things going on, which I had to be part of. A uh, huge um, heritage thing, which is quite up my street, really. It's sort of a, the vintage festival. Where it's not just music. You know, it's music, lifestyle, fashion, arts. Where's that? Um, in Northampton. If you look it up online, yeah. And I'm, and I'm hoping to do, you know, a proper, I haven't done one yet, but I will at some point this year do a proper sort of um, vintage gig nice. in a pub where it's not just music, where if you come, you dress up in period, whatever you want, whether you're influenced by the 50s, whether you're, into, you know, influenced by the 60s or the 70s or the 80s, you come dressed in period gear and we play period music. We're going to make sure we're there. We're going to bring that to you. All right. Excellent. Well, look, thank you so much for your time. Mr. J is absolutely a pleasure. Oh, it's wicked you talking to you guys. Definitely. Yeah, I, I respect you for doing your homework. That's a great name. Guess the Guess is that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>